Hey guys, Oregon Man Reads here, and today I'm here with some channel updates slash plans for the future, and yeah, it's a beautiful day here in Buffalo, New York. We are kind of turning the page going towards fall, so I'm glad I did my little fall TBR or autumn TBR for uh, Halloween, and yeah, we're going to get into some horror, but uh, yeah, I want to reach out and say, hey, I'm going to be trying to do some live streams on StreamYard. I found that it's kind of uh, easier than I thought. And I just have to check out my computer capabilities basically downstairs in the house to see if the camera is A, uh, good enough, or uh, B, if my mic, if it'll it'll work for me. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm thinking I can use like headphones, worst case scenario, and that would have a pretty decent microphone. So that'll probably be my plan. That way I can be slightly cheap because yeah, I'm not going to spend that much on a microphone. But yeah, so I want to extend the olive branch if there's any authors out there, if there's any of my buddies on YouTube that just want to link up and chat and interact with our uh, subscribers, I'd love to do that and finally do that, you know, a little bit of a happy hour where we can hang out, have a beer or some bourbon. Timmy, I'm looking at you, man. I know our, our schedules are pretty busy. We've had some people come and go, and I'm all over the place. And, uh, yeah, I just want to see if we can ha maybe hang out and, and, and chat. I think it'd be fun. So, obviously, I'm on Eastern Standard Time, which is New York time. So, like, right now, it's 9 a.m. So, yeah, yeah. So, it's just we got to keep that in mind. So, probably weekdays, like, 7.30 to, you know, the remainder of the night. And obviously, once this stream is done, we can leave it on our channels and, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. So, or we could do weekends. I'm actually, you know, nap time is like noon. So, I got like a three-hour span there in the middle of the afternoon on the weekends that I would love to do that, um, do a chat. So, yeah, anybody, just reach out and uh, let's do it. And then I'm going to reach out to some authors that I'm friends with, you know, well, friends with and uh you know and uh reach out to them and see if they want to maybe get their stories out there and talk about uh, their work but uh let's get to ronald kelly's flesh welder my overall thoughts were i really enjoy ronald kelly's writing style this is the, probably the second book that i've read uh by him he's a little underrated in my opinion he he's got some good prose he's got great character work and uh yeah he should definitely be checked out if if this is a good spot maybe because of the fact that it is so short you can kind of get a taste of how he writes uh you're you're dropped into a post-apocalyptic world where basically war and disease has just ravaged the landscape and you uh your main character is a gentleman who is kind of a doctor and kind of a welder and he basically takes body parts and limbs that have been cut off or broken or whatever and he basically welds and repairs damaged bodies and things like that so it's pretty i think that the author could have went a little more grotesque uh a little more extreme horror but that's maybe not his style so that's fine uh when i when i when the, when you started reading it though you kind of waited for like some horrific stuff to happen and so maybe that's why i gave it kind of a three stars because yes it's not good um, but if you read the synopsis, proof why synopsis suck, it kind of gives you the appearance that it would be a really grotesque storyline, and it, and it really wasn't. So, yeah, so Ronald Kelly's Flesh Welder, I'm going to finish by reading that synopsis. So if you're done here, feel free to leave. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It was a good audio book, very short, like an hour long. So check it out. But Flesh Welder by Ronald Kelly. Chaos reigns supreme. Social and economic upheaval, rampant terrorism and nuclear annihilation have turned the earth into a vast wasteland, and in Texas, the gates of hell have been cracked open, unleashing the evil and fury upon the undeserving. The inhabitants of a ruined town, which is actually Houston, Texas, find themselves as unwilling pawns trapped between warring world forces that desperately attempting to survive even when the bombing and gunfire cease they can find no refuge no relief and for afterwards satan himself descends merciless, mercilessly upon them in the form of a general pain and his band of sadistic mercenaries it is then that the suffering truly begins murder rape racial intolerance mutilation all are heaped upon those who dwell in the ruined town 
if only to feed the general's insati insatiable lust for power and sadistic pleasure. Afterward, the broken and dying seek out the only one who can deliver them from the horror that their world has become. The one who can miraculously weld flesh to flesh and bone to bone. He is the healer supreme, the medico grande, the flesh welder. So, yeah, it was pretty interesting. But if you, like, read that, you think that maybe that, uh, you know, general pain is going to be a little bit more uh, fleshed out. And, and I didn't feel that with his character arc. So uh, I would have liked a, a more intense bad guy. So that's, that's kind of my review for that little short story. And, uh, yeah, thanks for dropping by. This has been Josh from Working Man Reads. Don't, don't keep working, man. Bust open a book and relax. Peace. Hey, guys. Josh, I'm in my comfy chair. I'm home from work, but I did get a package today, so I wanted to splice this in at some point during my video. And yeah, I got John Athan into the Wolves Den. And yeah, basically, um, I did a lot of research on his Goodreads, so uh, basically to see which novel I wanted to read of his after uh, Richard at Are You Into Horror picked up the, it was, God, Groomer, I believe. So I was like, hey, I don't want to read the exact same one, so let's go try to find one that's uh, slightly different and off the beaten path. And this one was from a few years back. And, uh, yeah, it just sounded really messed up. Basically, this guy's daughters are taken, and he tries to find them by his own means and then eventually hires a private investigator. And then they begin their own research on how to find his daughters. And basically, he's got two daughters, one's eight and one's 12. And they are in a place called the Wolves Den, where there's just these creepy, crazy people that uh, wear masks on their face, kind of like in the picture here. And uh, yeah, they make like snuff films and crazy stuff. Um, but I think it's funny that this book literally has a warning label on it. This book contains graphic content. Reader discretion is advised. So you have... You have that, okay? You have that. Oh, there's a cool little cover thing. Cover designed by www.indieauthordesign.com. I'm going to check them out. Um, yeah, so if you see a warning label on something, you would think you would like pay attention to it. Like if, if a coffee you get says, warning, this contains hot beverage, you know, you would probably be like, yo, that's probably a hot drink. You know what I mean? If you have a warning label on a horror novel, you're going to be like, that's probably some extreme horror. But so if you're going to review something on Goodreads and then you give it one star because it was horror, that's exactly what the author probably wants to see. Like if I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write a horrific novel of splatterpunk, a lot of people dying with horrible scenes in it, then I get a one star review for it being horrific. Then I did my job. That's kind of the way I feel like it looks. So <laughs> that's been my rant, but I just think that those comments are really funny. So if you guys ever seen any of those comments, if so, let me know down below. I'd love to hear your stories about that. Or if you're an author and you've gotten a one-star review because your horror book was too horrifying. But, like, it's not like they're writing, like, outrageous, outland... Well, maybe they are, but I don't know. I feel like that's what they were going for. If it's on the plot, if it's in the plot narrative and he's writing something that goes along with his plot, and it's horror, then that's what he was going for. But, okay, that's enough for today. <laughs> Peace out, guys.